Academy Sports and Outdoors. It has been a fun-filled day. Uh, not a ton of twists and turns. It's just kind of a great big cherry on top of what has been one of the more unpredictable recruiting cycles that we've had. And so absent the huge surprise fireworks, i.e., you know, a Jackson State coming in and swooping up Harold Perkins or something like that, who just committed to LSU, by the way, We've had a lot to talk about today, but I wanted to get quickly to the Big 12 because we haven't been able to talk class superlatives there yet. And so I wanted to bring our guys here. Uh, Chris Singletary, I know, is along as well. And I wanted to dive right in here. Chris, the top overall class in the Big 12, where would you go? I would go down to Austin, Texas with the Longhorns. Um, very excited of what they've done, really addressing needs on both sides of the ball with 14 players between the offense and defensive lines. And they understand real simply that's where the game is won, along with having that guy behind center who they got in the, in, in, in the transfer in Quinn Ewers. Um, really excited about Kelvin Banks. Really excited about Nato, Jamon Tapp. And more so importantly, Justin Finkley, who I got a chance to see at the uh, Under Armour All-American game. Very powerful young player, uh, really uh, able to play with great leverage and really able to, to, to get his pass rush off. And that's something that they're going to need in, in the scheme that Pete Kwiatkowski has. And then also getting the, the, the guy to flip late uh, in the first cycle in Terrence Brooks. So that was huge for them. And Steve, you like them on the line of scrimmage, especially in this class. Yeah, we've talked about it all day. The way they've recruited the offensive line and the defensive line is the best I've seen Texas recruit at the point of attack. We've seen them land difference makers at quarterback. They do it again in the portal with Quinn Ewers. We've seen them get great running backs and skilled players in the secondary at wide out but the way they've recruited around the line of scrimmage is big but a guy that we haven't talked about much today is Ethan Burke they flipped him from Michigan at the end of the process a four-star from Austin Westlake who was a lacrosse commit to Maryland his dad's the head lacrosse coach over there at Austin Westlake he's helped them win two straight state titles except as a junior he got hurt missed most of the season probably would have blown up then but as a senior comes back has a great final season Michigan and some schools get on him late. Michigan gets him in the boat. A late offer from Texas keeps him home, and he's another potential big-time pass rusher for Steve Sarkeesian and company. Texas, class, Andrew Ivins, takeaway, go. Uh, one other guy I like, Justice Finkley. Uh, they pulled him out of Alabama, a, a front seven defender, an edge rusher. I, when I was at the Under Armour game, keep bringing it up. I was like, hey, who is this guy? How is Texas getting him out of Alabama? You know, Texas moved the SEC. I think that opens up some doors. Obviously, it's a national brand, Texas, but gets you in some areas normally you wouldn't be in. I think Justice Finkley is a, a great take for them. Uh, we keep talking about Quinn Ewers, the quarterback. Malik Murphy also signed with them. He's an Elite 11 finalist. I think he's kind of the perfect uh, ter perfect player for the boomer bust phrase. I mean, he could be something. I, I loved his arm. He's got a cannon. That's the first thing I said when I saw him throw at the Elite 11 final. So a lot to like for, for Steve Sarkeesian and that staff. Chris, what about Jordan Hudson? That's a wide receiver out of TCU's class. Instant impact, you say? Hey, Jordan Hudson was a, was, was, was a guy that really stepped on the scene at the Under Armour All-American game, really liked his film, and then got a chance to see him in person, and really liked his size and his athleticism. Um, guy that had uh, better speed than you would think in person and had tremendous length and, and, and catch radius. And so he was able to easily win 50-50 balls while he was down in uh, Orlando. I think in, in Sonny Dice's scheme and what they're going to do with him and how they'll utilize him and throwing the ball all around the lot, I expect him to have a uh, early impact for the Horn Frost down in Fort Worth. Steve, quick thoughts there. Well, you add DJ Allen, who they beat Florida for here at the end of the cycle. That's uh, DJ, DJ Allen and Jordan Hudson uh, at, at the wideout position. And then Josh Hoover threw or for 40 touchdowns this year at Rockwall Heat there. So that could be a prolific combination with him under center and those two guys at wideout. The overall surprise class, Chris, why should I go to Ames, Iowa? Sell me on Iowa State. It's funny, me and Ivan were talking about this uh, early in the year, and I kept saying, look at this class, and, and they continue to build, and now you see why they've been successful under Matt Campbell and his staff. And so they do it again. They get Hunter Dayo, they get Jacob Emmy, and then they go down to Tampa, Florida, and they get one of the most underrated wide receivers in the country in Greg Gaines, uh, a guy who had 13 touchdowns as a, uh, as a junior, and then he comes back and has 11 touchdowns as a senior. So I think when you look at how they put that class together with size and length, and then with just really good football players to fit their makeup. That's why I like what the Cyclones are doing. Let me go right back to well, Andrew, actually. You yeah, I'll say this about Iowa State. I think they are really good at making initial evaluations. When they toss out an offer 
in, in the state of Florida or Georgia I, it raises my eyebrows because I want to know more about that kid. He mentioned Greg Gaines. I think that's a potential wide receiver one for them. They were in on our Mason Thomas. That would have made that class that much better. Uh, obviously, he flipped to Oklahoma and signed with them. But there's a lot to like. Terrell Crosby was a kid that was committed to play for Toledo, had an excellent senior season, picked off eight passes, uh, was also a, a difference maker on offense. So I think Matt Campbell, um, they, they have that thing cranking. They're all about player development. They're going to recruit certain guys, and uh, it's easy to see why they're winning games or, or have the chance and potential to win games there. There wasn't a player higher on their board than defensive tackle Dominique Orange out of Kansas City. They were on him very early and got him in the fold late. It was a big battle for them. Been a lot of talk around the Oklahoma program about the exit of Caleb Williams, but Chris Singletary, if I were to task you with finding me a future Heisman somewhere here in the Big 12, you say you'd go right back to Norman. I go back to Norman with quarterback Nick Evers. I think when you couple what uh, uh, Coach Levy did with um, helping Matt Carell get his career really uh, rejuvenated down in Ole Miss, I'm saying if you have this kid for three to four years, I'm betting on the same uh, outcome of really uh, taking his talent, really getting him refined in the passing game and utilizing not only his passing skills but also his running ability and some of the high-power guys that they'll have on the perimeter in the run game. I'm really excited to see uh, uh, the numbers that he will put up and really seeing uh, opportunity for him to uh, be in the Heisman hunt in the future. How do we think this is going to go? The quarterback dynamic there. Dylan Gabriel just walked in the door. And then we're talking about Nick Evers having really big upside. So immediately, what does it look like there? I anticipate uh, Dylan Gabriel being the guy. You know, he knows Jeff Levy, the new offensive coordinator from his time at UCF. I, and I, I'm a fan of Levy and what he's done on the recruiting trail. So I think Dylan Gabriel, we're going to see a bounce back here uh, for him uh, in Oklahoma. And uh, again, you know, Levy's going to run similar what he did at, with Matt Corral at Ole Miss. So it'll be exciting to see them. And this kid, they got committed a quarterback in 2023, Jackson Arnold from Denton Geyer. He's a top five quarterback in the country, in my opinion. He went to the state title game and lost to Cade Klubnick in Austin Westlake, but they had him on the ropes in the fourth quarter. And he's dynamic with his legs and powerful and strong with the football as a passer. There's going to be a new Big 12 eventually. I mean, some would say it's going to happen tomorrow. Some say it's not to 2025, but eventually... This will be a list of the new programs joining the conference, and we've got Cincinnati fresh off a college football playoff appearance, first ever of that variety for the G5. Houston, UCF, Brigham Young, tough for me to say BYU, something Georgia, and so I say Brigham Young in its totality instead. But as you talk about recruiting for the new Big 12, what does it mean? Is there any different? I mean, the way that you win is gonna be the way you win, but when you watch OU and Texas walk out and you watch these programs walk back in, what, if anything, is the difference to you? I think the fact that UCF's going into the Big 12 has really helped them on the recruiting trail. Gus Malzahn, ever since he arrived from Auburn, he's made it a priority to keep kids in his backyard home, and they're winning some big recruiting ba ba big recruiting wins. Quan Lee, a top 247 wide receiver, he was committed to Miami, mm -hmm. ends up signing with uh, the Knights. They're also getting it done in the transfer portal. I think they're going to be ready for the Big 12 when they get there. Also, BYU, they got a sleeper out of Florida, Dom Henry. Tons of schools passed him over. He led the state in receiving yards. So the fact that BYU coming all the way to the Sunshine State was a, was a bit surprising for me. For a second straight year, I think it's Cincinnati finishing with the number one group of five class in the country in our, our rankings here. And now just even more potential with that Big 12 logo. I know Coach Luke Fickle and his staff are excited to have that on their jacket when they go out and recruit moving forward. And Luke Fickle always said something to me or said something to me when he first got to Cincinnati that stuck with me. He said every staff that he's ever been on, the head coach has been the best recruiter, whether that was Coach Trestle or Coach Meyer. So that's the standard he holds himself to. And it's not just recruiting isn't just for the head coach getting out and courting prospects, but it's about having making sure there's great infrastructure, making sure we're evaluating at a high level, making sure that these guys are guys that fit what we're looking for schematically and culturally. It's going to help us be difference makers. And, and you see the product on the field for Cincinnati. They've gotten better every single year since Luke Fickle's been here. And you look at that tight end that was dancing with Brian Kelly in the video, Danny Lewis, that committed to Alabama later in the day. He was committed to Cincinnati for most of the cycle, and you wonder if they're in the Big 12 if he would have put pen to paper and, and, and shut it down early instead of taking it past the early signing period. And Chris, let's not overlook this. Cincinnati, as Steve just mentioned, the top overall rated G5 class today. This is not a program parked in the state of Florida or the state of Texas or out in California. They're in Ohio, and yet they're attracting premier talent not just from the state, but nationally. 
they're getting the guys they need to. But when we looked at that graphic and those new programs going to the Big 12, what stands out to you about the future of that conference? I'm excited to see what the Houston Cougars could do now being in the Big 12 and having that influx of revenue to to help them from a facility standpoint and resources. And, you know, this year they kept Matthew Golden uh, uh, from Houston Klein in the in, in state and kept him right in the backyard, who was a top 247 player, 247 player for us. I'm saying now when they go and they're in the Big 12, they're going to have a few more wins right in their backyard in Houston and in the surrounding suburbs. So I'm excited to see what the Houston Cougars will do once they transition to the Big 12. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.